Edinburgh Genomics is the leading academic based uh, open access DNA sequencing operation in the UK and one of the largest in Europe. Our markets are research, clinical and agricultural communities in the UK and Europe and the rest of the world. We provide whole genome sequencing for human and animals as well as a range of bespoke uh, genomic applications. The $1,000 genome, the ability to sequence an individual's entire genetic makeup for $1,000 was a pivotal moment for the University of Edinburgh, who decided to invest £8 million on acquiring a whole genome sequencing platform. Since the HiSeq X10 facility has been operational eight months ago, we have sequenced 4,000 genomes. The end-to-end -end solution that we have built here in the, in the facility for the HiSeqX is a Illumina's end-to-end -end solution, which is called SeqLab. What it means is that a full automation of all the workflows in the lab, from the reception of the DNA till we get the results of the sequence. The sequencing projects are large and small. Projects where we sequence over a thousand genomes for cancer or looking at the decline of intellect in later life, to smaller projects that look at the very early stages of life for diagnosing rare diseases and looking at developmental disorders from birth. All the biological and clinical information we extract from sequence data is done via informatics and uh, the informatics uh, involved is increasingly sophisticated and involves supercomputing clusters and optimal software configurations. We're very active at the moment in three main areas oncology, where we work with NHS cancer clinicians to try and stratify patients uh, by sequencing their tumours and target them for different treatments. Population cohorts, where we use genome sequencing and the analysis of those data to try and find out more about the unusual genetics of isolated island communities in Scotland and elsewhere. The third area is we help to diagnose children with developmental disorders. My expertise is in paediatric disorders, so and particularly genetic disorders, these tend to be severe neurodevelopmental and neurological disorders. The development of next generation sequencing in a family context has really revolutionised that, really being based on the identification of de novo mutations, so where, where you've got a mutation in a child that's not present in either parent. And from a family point of view, I think just that allows you to give an explanation for the family for these often devastating disorders. It also allows you to clarify the risk to other family members. It allows the family, if it's relevant to them, to have prenatal diagnosis or pre-implantation genetic diagnosis. But from the child's point of view, I think it can, man it can alter management. It can certainly reduce your requirement to do further diagnostic testing, which are often invasive, intrusive, require general anaesthetics, you can really make a definitive diagnosis. The genetic service in Edinburgh is funded through the NHS. Edinburgh Genomics is part of the University of Edinburgh. We are fortunate to be co-located in the Institute of Genetics and Molecular Medicine at the Western General Hospital, a part of the University of Edinburgh. Co-location allows us to ensure that the diagnostic voice is heard early on in development and to make sure that these advances are useful to patients. We've sequenced 4,000 genomes just in the last eight months since our sequencing facility was operational and the Institute of Genetics and Molecular Medicine has 120 computational biologists, so we are superbly placed for our generating and analysing these big data sets which the sequencing capacity um, of our platform can generate. The fact that we have this platform and this capability explains why the Scottish Government and the Medical Research Council awarded us £6 million to sequence the genomes of patients in the Scottish population and healthy populations from around Scotland. The Lothian Birth Cohort is a group of about 1,500 people, some of them born in 1921, some of them born in 1936. They took part in the Scottish Mental Surveys of 1932 and 1947, which means, unusually, they have IQ test scores from age 11, 
and we've now followed them up in old age, in their 70s in one case and in their 80s in another case. And we have a great deal of information about their cognitive capabilities, their medical status and in many cases brain imaging as well. Edinburgh Genomics, most of the Lothian birth cohorts of 1921 and 1936 have been whole genome sequenced. This means that all three billion base pairs across their DNA has been tested. Now this will give us unparalleled insights into lifetime cognitive ageing, that is how much people's cognitive, their mental thinking skills have changed from childhood into old age and we can look at the genetic contributions to that. It's not the majority but it's some of it and especially it will tell us whether rarer genetic variants are involved in how much people change in their thinking skills from childhood to old age. We owe our history to being the Animal Breeding Research Organisation for the United Kingdom. We've had a long-term relationship with most of the large animal breeders in the transition from breeding based on phenotypes to breeding based on genomics and what we now call genomic selection and uh, we collaborate with almost all of the large multinational breeding companies to improve the productivity of livestock. Increasingly, we're aiming to improve the resilience of livestock in the face of some of the challenges of food security and the threats of infectious disease. We have been intimately involved in all of the livestock genome projects, fully sequencing the livestock genomes, and now we're turning to applying genomics to rationally developing better animals that are more productive and more resilient. The Edinburgh Genomics is really the, the go-to place for whole genome sequencing and the vision is to propel the university to the forefront of genomic science and data analytics worldwide.